All righty, guys. Hey, welcome to another weekly uh, session here. And I'm very excited here because we've got a friend of mine, Jana Kumara. She's an absolute rock star. And if you guys don't know Jana, um, I'm going to have her kind of explain a little bit of her story. And please take notes because she is an absolute savage. We're about to dive into how to become one of the number one FFL agents in history. And, and this is probably kind of a, a weird thing to hear said, I'm sure, John, because it was just not too long ago. You were like, man, I don't know if I can do this. And look at you, freaking setting the bar, rising the tide. So, Jonna, welcome. It looks like you've got good internet connection this time. Except uh, you're, you're muted, so... <laughs> I said, yes, I do. And thank you. And uh, thank you there we go. Yeah. There we go. She's here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So for those that don't know you, maybe give everybody a little background story, like how long you've been in insurance, what got you here to FFL and what keeps you uh, kind of in the mode of rocking and rolling? Yeah. So um, I am a single mom. I've been a single mom for 12 years and I was looking for an opportunity initially about four years ago, that's about when I started in the industry, uh, where I could work from home, you know, have the potential for more income and be able to provide for my kids because it was just me supporting the kids, no one else. Um, and I learned about the insurance industry. I started with a different IMO. Um, it definitely took several years for me to get to this point where I can finally say like, I'm successful at this now. Um, and it's been, you know, quite the learning curve, um, like just developing the mindset to be successful uh, has been a big part of this journey. And um, yeah, so I, you know, I've been, I was with FFL at one point before I left, I came back, I joined FFL Aria, which is Vivian Viles agency. Um, and just everything kind of came together. It kind of had all the the things in place that I felt like I needed to, to really, you know, say, this is where I'm going to, this is my home, this agency, mm -hmm. you know, I'm going to thrive here, do well. And, you know, having the mentorship and support of Vivian and Adriano, you know, has been amazing. So that's kind of my story. Uh, some of my favorites in FFL, um, actually Vivian, I've got to thank her because it was probably nine months in seven, eight, nine months, she launched, you might even remember this. She launched like a mortgage protection training series for all of FFL. She's like, join my stuff if you want to. And I watched that and I, I would get like a little bit of the bits and pieces of it. But just from watching her one, like 30 minute segment that unlocked something in my career. And it was on pace to hit hall of fame from like just 20, 30 minutes. So I can't imagine having access to her every single day. And I understand why she's got multiple agents that are breaking <laughs> the standard of what it is to be an insurance producer. Um, but you did just say something you've been in the industry about four years. It took some time to get into the position now to where you could say you're successful now. And I want you to kind of talk about that because I feel a lot of people, you know, as we're new, we see somebody else doing these massive things, these big numbers, uh, you know, helping a ton of families and putting them into a position financially where they're like, man, I can never be that person. What was that thing that just unlocked for you or that, that step or that risk factor that breaking through that limit of fear um, to where you went from you know, I'm kind of bumping my head. I'm trying to figure it out. Was it a timeline? Was it something new you learned? Was it kind of walk us through that if you can? Yeah. So, um, I think seeing other agents, like seeing Vivian do it, you know, having seen that it could be done and that it's possible was a big thing. And then having them, you know, having them believe in me, and having Vivian like speak into me and believe in me that like, I, I absolutely can do this. And that all these limitations that, you know, were there were really in my mind, like the, the barriers and the lack of self-belief. So um, for me, it came to a, 
a situation where I had my back against the wall financially due to um, my custody case and having to hire a very good lawyer. So, um, I mean, my kids are everything to me. So it's like, okay. And, and that's really when I realized this is a choice. Like I just have to cut the excuses and like go to work and like really, you know, put all of those elements together that we hear all the time in, in this company of like, you know, what are the recipes for success here? You know, the having the leads, the appointments, you know, the work ethic, uh, the mindset and putting all those things together, choosing to have all those things, putting them together and just going, you know, full speed ahead with no fear. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's when everything changed for me a month, a month after I had my fourth baby. That was when I had my record month at that time, which was 67 families. So that's basically, that's what it was for me. And then I just kept, and then once I did it one time, I was like, Oh, I can, this is, this is my new normal. Like, you know, 30 families a week. I was like, this is, this is what it's going to be every week. You know, this is what I'm shooting for every week. So, right. Yeah. So you're, you're saying once you hit 30 families a week, you're like, okay, I can do this. I can do more. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I remember the first time when that clicked, you know, where you're helping five, 10 families a week and you're like, okay, I'm doing a good job. And then you help 15, then you help 20, then you help 30. And then one day you do like 15 and then you're like, oh, okay, if I've been able to help 15 in a day, can I do 20? Can I do 30? And then next thing you know, you do 50 in a week and you, then you, you start to stretch the capacity, right? Yeah. Um, and you've probably experienced, and I've heard this from somebody I've been following a lot very recently. And he said, once your vision's been stretched, you can't have it go backwards, right? Correct. And, and I feel like that's kind of where you're at. You've, you've realized that you can break the limit. And last month, just so everyone's clear, guys, we, we interviewed Jonna here, what was it November? Something like that. Some, sometime in November. And you were 200 or so ish families away or 100, 250, 260 families away, I think, <laughs> from hitting from all, all of fame, right? All fame. right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And last month you helped how many? 200 families, <laughs> which was FFL's <laughs> record. And and we're talking all simplified issue. <laughs> yeah, yeah, mostly America. Oh my gosh, and a ten percent bonus on top of that for all of the business you wrote. Wow! So yeah. not only was last quarter a massive for you, you've already probably surpassed what most people's uh, income is annually um, that live in America based off of your bonus, you're going to receive just from AmeriCo in the next few months, correct? Correct. Yeah. I mean, my, my bonus with AmeriCo just from December is already at 7,000. So, you know, if I'm doing, and December was even, I want to even kind of say like, yeah, 200 families, but it still kind of felt like things were a little slow with the holidays and things like that. So I don't know what's possible for the future, but you know, yeah, in six months, it's going to be a, a very nice bonus, plus the FFL producer bonus, which and Hall know, of Fame. If you, if you, yeah, Hall of Fame. So, yeah, the FFL producer bonus, if you do 125 families, right, it's 5,000, 150 families, it's 6,000. So, once you start, you know, putting up those bigger numbers and you get a lot of, a lot of income just in bonus, it's pretty insane. And when you compile that all together, just from bonuses alone, when you probably put it all together from all the carriers, you're right. You're probably making more money than most people in America do. And that's one thing I love about the insurance industry. It's, and while it may not be about making money, think about how much money from you working your butt off, you put into households, the amount of the mission that you accomplished just last month, like, Guys, everybody, like, can could we light the chat up? Like, give freaking Jana a round of applause here. Seriously, like, thanks, Jesse. <laughs> this is insane. I, I I think about it because I've I've helped 130 families in a month, and a, a decent amount of that was you know uh, advanced market. So it's not like what you're doing. I mean, we're talking. 70 appointments a week. Like this is insane activity. So John, like break that down because I really feel it's, it's not necessarily the, 
you've got to have a, a different, you've got to be thinking differently. You know, like you're, you're vibrating on a different wavelength and energy of what you're trying to actually not trying, you are accomplishing. Uh, you are full blown niking the shit out of life right now, you know? Because I hate the word trying. So I just say, go Nike it, you know? I'm not yeah. a big, I'm not a big Adidas yeah. fan, but go Nike it, you know? So go right. get it. <laughs> How do you maintain Nike attitude seven days a week with that type of mentality with children in the house, feeding newborns, making sure the kiddos are fed and time for yourself? What does that look like daily for you? Yeah, so I mean- at one point, a couple of months ago, you know, when I was just starting to get things off the ground and I, you know, I was even like struggling a little bit, Vivian was like, money is the answer to all your problems. You have four kids, you know, you're going to, you need to make a lot of money. You can afford help, you know, and, and take your life to the next level. So, you know, I, I started to invest once I started to believe more, I like started to take those risks where I'm like, okay, I'm going to get this many leads, you know, I'm going to spend this crazy amount on leads. And, you know, just go all in and then just, you know, within a couple of weeks, it's like, okay, now I can get a new house. Like I can get a bigger house now. So it's like, I scaled my business, you know, I got a bigger place. Um, I hired a live-in nanny and she's absolutely amazing. So she, you know, takes care of my kids for me 60 to 70 hours a week. So I can produce at a high level. Um, my schedule for December, I was running for hall of fame. So it was a little I was working a lot harder than like I'm going to for, you know, every month of the year <laughs> coming up, but right. I was running six days a week, um, 16 to 17 zoom appointments per day, 16 to 17. Wait, say that again. Yeah. 16 to 17 zoom appointments per day, six days a week. <laughs> oh my God. 17 appointments in a day. Yep. Every 45 minutes. <laughs> and you're completing applications, building rapport, closing them, getting them walked through the entire process in 45 minutes. Yeah, for the most part. But even if I'm not, I mean, sometimes, you know, especially when you're working with couples and things like that, it can take a little bit longer. But the idea here is to always be writing business. You know what I mean? So like, and, and not be sitting around twiddling your thumbs if you have a no show for an hour. Right. So, you know, if, if I'm in an appointment and I'm writing business and it runs into my next appointment, we can just reschedule that appointment. I'm making money and helping families and it's all good. But a lot of times, you know, if it's a single person, I can, you know, I can write them, get them approved with America in 30 minutes. Okay. You know, so so then next question, let's say you're on an appointment, it's set up for the wife, ends up going to be husband, wife, two kids, three kids. So it's obviously going to run past, right? Mm -hmm. And it might be two appointments next. Are you handing those off to other agents within your agency or are you just flat out rescheduling? Um, yeah, I just have my staff call to reschedule them just to let them know that we're behind schedule. And we need to reschedule them. Um, or I'll just reach out to them and be like, Hey, I'm running a little bit behind. Is that cool? You know, you know. Okay. And um, are you dominantly working one time? Cause you, you're here in Florida, right? Yeah. And are you working all East coast? Are you working from here all the way back to Hawaii? What does that look like? How many States are you licensed in? Um, I'm licensed. I want to say about 18 States. But um, I'm working, I'm working like three states. I'm working Michigan and Ohio. I work Florida, sometimes like North Carolina. So you've only got three, four states locked out that you're working in right now only. Yeah. And is there a reason you've chose those states? Is it just comfortability with the time zone? Because I, I, I'm trying to wrap my head around 16 to 17 appointments in a day at 45 minutes. It's like, when do you have time to use the bathroom, eat food, like, or is the live-in yeah, nanny? Well, I mean, the, the point of having that many of appointments is because you're going to get no-showed. Like that's, yeah. you know, it's a 50% show ratio on Zoom. So believe it or not, you know, I still, anytime somebody no-shows me, I have 45 minute break to go to the bathroom, to eat lunch, you Got know it. what I mean? To make myself, you know, a drink or whatever. 50% um, show rate. And so on a, on an average day though, like when you're in a rhythm, what would you say the amount of applications are being written per day? 
So typically I'm closing between three to five appointments per day. Wow, I have that's... a pretty high close ratio. I, I know wow. that Vivian has said a couple of times I have one of the highest in her agency, if not the highest. Yeah, I was going to say that's that's awesome. You know, is if you're averaging three applications to five applications a day with that momentum, I mean, you're talking if you were to keep that up over a six day time span, you're probably doubling the FFL record over over time. But then again, like, is that going to be sustainable? Like, do you think you could do that for 12 months? Yeah. So my, my schedule now, instead of doing six days a week, I'm going to take Sundays and Mondays off. So, you know, having two days off is plenty for me to reset, but I mean, you know, think about it. Like you, you're making a hundred thousand, you know, helping a hundred thousand, 150,000 families a month or I didn't say it right. You, you got it. You're 150 fine. families a month. Um, is like, what, what other motivation do you need to work your butt off? You know, it's right. like, what, you know, like how, what can you do with that amount of cash for your family, for other people, you know, just like, I just got back. I haven't had a vacation since I don't even know when as a single mom, like a struggling single mom for all these years. And I was able to take two weeks off go on vacation. You know, I went to, to Vail and had a very nice ski trip. And it was just like, you know, just the lifestyle, like not even having to worry about blowing 300 bucks on a nice dinner or whatever, taking a spa day, things like that. Like, and being able to really kind of pamper myself after all, all this, like, I mean, I've been under so much pressure, just, you know, I have four kids, <laughs> like before I had my nanny, it was just like, ugh, like yeah. I have to do all this stuff for my kids, like 24 seven juggling work, you know, dealing with unreliable childcare. So, um, it felt really good just to like, finally be like, ah, I get vacation. I can like, <laughs> you know, really enjoy my vacation and, you know, live, live a little bit lavishly here for a week. So that was pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. um, well, what I'm, was the question? I'm excited for you. I mean, it's, no, I was just saying, is that sustainable, but it makes oh, sense yeah, I'm now that you've, you've restructured and you've put yourself into a position where you're going to have a, a little bit of that schedule um, consistently to where you'll, you'll feel able. Cause I know like if, if we're not going to be able to have those breaks, you're going to have those burnout moments. You're just going to feel oh, like I was burnt completely. out by yeah. the end of December. Yeah. After running yeah. for hall of fame, I, I needed those two weeks off because I was just like, if I have to sit with another insurance appointment, I'm going to cry. Like I was just <laughs> feeling very mentally burnt out. So yeah. yeah, but now I, I, you know, the last day of my vacation, I was just checking in with myself. I was like, you know, I, I really feel ready to get back to work and like, mm -hmm. you know, tackle 2023. So that's good. It's important. You know, mental health is something I feel like we don't really talk about enough here within work or business in general. And I feel if people start to focus on mental health, physical, spiritual health, this business becomes like autopilot. It, mm -hmm. You know, we don't really have to overthink everything. Um, but I'm, I'm just absolutely blown away. I mean, you're a true inspiration for myself, um, just as an aspiring hardworking agent, uh, but let alone, I feel like you're giving so many of the moms here strength, knowing that they can break through. You just have to keep going. You can't give up. Yeah. Get your systems yeah, in I place. Mean, for me, for me, it's, you know, like the self-belief and like, I have a very strong faith in God. That's one thing I can say I've always had. It's just like, you know, even when things have been really rough in my life, you know, I've always had this sense that like things would be okay. You know, God was going to help me get me through to the next, to the next level. And I feel like that more than anything has, you know, carried me through to this point and will, you know, continue to, you know, I think God has a plan for our lives. I feel like, you know, like with this, opportunity and what I'm able to do, you know, with having this amount of money that I'll eventually have, like, I want to do things that'll help other people, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? So do like, I want to be doing this for the right reason, not just so I can, you know, make myself happy, but I want to do things to help other people. And, you know, I think when you have like the right mindset, the right belief in yourself, you know, your faith is in the right place, your heart's in the right place, then there's, you know, the only thing holding you back is you not believing, not believing in God, not 
believing in yourself. So, you know, the limiting amazing. beliefs. I, I, yes. I couldn't agree with you more because those limiting beliefs will stop us from where we want to be. And I feel most of us in general, we think way too small. Mm -hmm. We all do because it's the fear. It's the stuff that happened to us when we were younger. It's, you know, it's uh, maybe that something that our parents or our siblings or we got bullied in middle school, high school, something that has became our identity, right? And as we've gotten older, we have to recreate ourselves. And this is one of my favorite things about the insurance industry because it's either you continue to do the same things in life and continue to make up excuses and, and stay the same, or you start to recreate who you want to be and you grab onto the identities potentially of others until it can become yours, right? And mm -hmm. and it's like, like for me, like I look at Vivian and I was like, man, how could I be like Vivian? Like she's so freaking good. And I just started to watch a ton of her training. How can I look like, how can I sound like her? How can I talk like her? How can I close like her? And then you start to listen to other top producers that are doing it. So let's dive into some of that because let's run through maybe like some of the scripting, some of the objections, some of the nuts and bolts that agents on here can take and can go from potentially closing just a few families to now maybe helping 10, 15 a week and may not be the 30 to 70 that you're doing. Um, by all means, <laughs> rock star. Uh, but it's it's all about progress. And I really feel if we focus on that, that end of this, the spectrum, that's the most important, right? Because yeah. your, yeah. your testimony, literally, it's, you went from helping 60-ish families just a few months ago, and that was a record for you, to now that's your weekly. Um, so that's just, <laughs> I, I, I just keep laughing because it, God, God creates humor in these type of situations, just making it proof. You're walking proof that we can do so much more. And I'm confident that 200 families in a month could be done in a week. And I'm confident 200 families done in a day is also possible. But does anybody else think that? And this is, I, I, Sean and I, we were talking about something like this. I, I'm sorry, I'm getting off a little segue here, but it's about belief. And hopefully this is helping someone because Sean and I were talking about this. Everything that we've talked about over the last probably 18 months has became true. And I remember our conversation that we had back in November, Jonna, that I was like, Jonna, what's your goal? She's like, Hall of Fame by the end of the year. I was like, I know you can do it. It's only 200 families in a month. You're like, I can do it. And I was like, yeah, I know you can. And you, but it's you saying it, you literally, you spoke the words, right? And, yeah. and this is where you have to be very, very, very cautious. What's it say in the Bible? power of life and death lie within the what the tongue there we go so if we're speaking that we can't do it it's not going to happen if we're speaking doubt or we're speaking this things like i can't do it i'm not going to be able to make it i can't i can't i can't i can't just equals i'm not i'm not willing to i'm not willing to sacrifice something and i'm not willing to break through i'm not willing to go hire a nanny move into a bigger place do this do this and since you did that you're now creating this abundance around you where you're demanding more from the world. You're demanding more from God. You're demanding more from the kingdom. But it's also, like you said, to bless others. Mm -hmm. That's powerful. I'm sorry. I just got on a little rant. Like that got no, me freaking great. pumped. That's what um, it is. So one of the goals I've had this year was to be living off of 20% of my income and also tithing 30% of it as well. Nice. And most people are going to look at that and going, how? Well, well, let's think bigger. Where do we want to go? Where do you want to go, Jonna? Where, where do you want to be in the next, next year? Agency-wise, we're going to get into a little vision for the next five minutes, and then I want to get into some scripting, some fun stuff. Where's Jonna want to go in the next 12 months? 
Yeah. I mean, I would, in the next 12 months, I would love to have, you know, at least 10, 10 agents that are writing steady business and, and doing well. You know, I want to have, I want to grow, you know, a large agency, but to me, I don't want to just have a bunch of agents that aren't doing anything or that, you know, aren't motivated or have work hard. I really want to have, you know, maybe 10 to 30 agents that really are working and, and following the system and doing what needs to be done and doing well, people that, you know, I can, that, pour, that I can pour into and help. And, you know, they also help themselves in return. Um, I, I would like to consistently be issuing 125 families per month, you know, 125 to 150 families per month. Um, and, you know, also making that time where I can help my agents and things like that, because that's, you know, important to give them some time and then, yeah, just, you know, hiring the staff I need and I'd like to buy a house next year some point a nice house in the same neighborhood that I'm at I'm, I'm renting right now but I want to get something that's a little bit bigger for my family and there you go yeah wow massive goals big big goals and I'm very confident that you're going to be able you will accomplish this and much more and I have a feeling 10 agents is a really good goal to have but I'm thinking it's going to be closer to that 30 to 40 because I would say if, if I was on the outside of FFL right now, I would go, Hey, I want to go work with you. I want to go work with you. You're leading by example. You're killing it. You've got a great attitude. You show up and you've been nothing but completely supportive. So as we talk about the support, uh, we're going to run through some objections. So those of you, please grab your pens and paper. Um, so let's say, so I, it sounds to me like, you're, you've got a service right now that you buy your leads, they're booking appointments for you, and you've got your schedule pretty much filled. So you're not actually dialing yourself, right? No, but okay. I was for a long time. Okay. For years. I do not recommend any new agents to try to hire appointment setters. Number one, you have to be very good on the phones because when you have an appointment setter, they're an extension of you. So you have to be good at the phones. You have to be solid at booking appointments so that you can train these people because it literally took two to three months to get these people up to speed to where I needed to be to train them. And I had to have the capital to invest while they were learning, you know, things like that. So, I mean, I've seen agents go broke pretty quickly trying to, to skip steps. There's no shortcut, you know what I mean? Around the hard work of having to do the grind yourself. Like that's, that's part of it. But once you do that grind yourself, you're, you know, you're issuing 30 to 40,000 a month on your own, dialing your own leads, investing, dialing, working hard, then you can start hiring staff and you can afford to do that and, you know, not put your business in danger. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's, that's what it's about. It's like scaling this business and, and realizing it's that numbers game, you know, of investing the hours you're putting in the appointments you're setting. And that's, that's basically how it works. That's powerful. Okay. So, Appointments booked. I I just logged on to your Zoom. I'm here. I have no idea that I'm what I'm here for, except we're going to talk about insurance. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, Bing Bing. Um. Hi, Jesse. How are you today? Hey. What's going on? Hi. Um. My name is Jana, and um. I'll just let me just verify here a couple bits of information. So I see that you have a mortgage with. Loan Depot for two hundred and fifty thousand, mm -hmm. um, and you're paying eighteen hundred a month on a thirty year term. Is that right? Yep. So okay, you just then, go straight into it. Yeah, I just like confirm the information just Got so it. that you know, okay, like this is like I have okay. the information. Um, I show right, so that my... I, I don't I don't want to interrupt. Yeah, yeah. I got a two hundred fifty thousand uh, dollar mortgage with Loan Depot. We got it like eighteen months ago. Okay, great. And then I just, you know, I also make sure that everybody that is supposed to be there is there. So I don't start running a one legger and not know it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, okay. So it's you and your wife who else lives in the home. Uh, it's actually just me. I don't have a wife. Okay. Okay. Got it. So, all right, perfect. So I'll just explain to you a little bit about who I am and what I do. 
So I'm a senior medical underwriter, and I work with all of the A-rated insurance carriers in the country that offer the mortgage protection plans. So it's my job to be like the eyes and ears for the carriers. They don't require any blood draws or medical exams. They just have me talk to you to see if you need mortgage protection, verify your eligibility, and go over your options. So I just need to ask you some questions to determine those things. Then I can pull a couple options that I think will make sense for you. So if we find something that makes sense, all we can do today is put in an application to see if we can get you approved, okay? Okay. All right, great. Um, and are you so, reading a script like right here? No, I have okay. that memory. Um, so I, so Not I say, notice okay. guys, she has her script memorized. Professionals. Okay, keep going. Yeah. And this is, you know, like this presentation, it's like Vivian's presentation is pretty similar to this. I would say hers is a little lengthier. Um, because she, her appointments are really long for me. You know, I'm trying to do more volume. Vivian's really good. I mean, she, at the end of the day, she'll close like four thirty thousand dollars IULs, and you're like, what just happened? <laughs> so, but for me, you know, I try to focus more on volume because I'm not like at that level yet with the IULs and annuities. Twenty twenty three is another goal. Well, but, hey, um, if you need help with that stuff, feel free to reach out. Uh, yeah, you know. I'm, I wouldn't want to toot my horn, but I know a couple things about that stuff. So, um, it's pretty solid. So if you, if you need some assistance with the fixed yeah. index annuities, I got you. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, so that I, you know, I'll show my credentials on the screen. Like this is my, you know, my license information, make sure they have my license information. Um, and then I say, okay, so so it's just you, Jesse. Um, mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about why we're meeting today. Are you just looking for something to pay off the house? Got permission to happen to you, or like what are, what would be your main concerns as far as protecting the mortgage? Well, I got this piece of paper in the mail, and I I just filled it out. I don't know. I have no idea what this is, honestly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We get that. You know, I hear, I hear that often, but a lot of times people have more you know, of a stronger motive for filling it out. Like they just want to make sure that if God forbid something happens to them, that their entire mortgage is paid off, or if they get very sick, that they don't lose their home. They have, you know, enough money there to take care of the mortgage. So um, does that sound like something that you would be interested in? Yeah, I do. But Jonna, is, is it required that I have to get this? Do I need this a hundred percent? So it's recommended. And my job is to help to help you to see if you need it. Okay, Got so it. I'm going to go over the information with you, and then it's going to be your choice ultimately if you want to have this. But we're, I'll help you see if you need this, and if if you think that you do, then we can put in an application and see if you can get it. Okay, and then with the application, how much like do I have to pay for anything today? No, you don't have to pay for anything up front today. Okay, and what would stop them it. from saying yes? Um, it could be a number of things like maybe bankruptcies or it's, it's usually based on like your health, but it could be, you know, felonies, um, driving record, things like that. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. So I just need to ask you a few questions and then, you know, we can see what's get this makes sense for you. So who, who would your beneficiary be Jesse, if something happened to you? Uh, it's going to be my mom. Mom. Okay. Mm -hmm. awesome. And, um, and you would just want to have the house paid off if something happened so you could leave it to your mom. Does that sound about right? Yeah, pretty much. If I yeah. could, like right now I've been, I want to just pay the house off early. I, I hate bills. Mm -hmm. So how long do you think it would take you feasibly to, to pay off your home? You're on a 30 year. So how many years do you think it would actually take you? I'm hoping like 22 because I've been paying, you know, sometimes double payments, you know, I pay like 500, $700 extra sometimes in months. Okay. Well, that's awesome. I'm sure you'll do it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's, that's perfectly fine. I mean, we can tailor this plan to like fit your goals. You know, if, if having something that covers you for 20 years makes more sense, then we can totally do that. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Um, okay. So I just need to collect a little bit of information here. Um, what is your date of birth, Jesse? 513.84. Okay. And your height and weight? 5'9.175. Okay. Do you smoke tobacco? Nope. Any health problems? Nope. Totally healthy. Perfect. And any medications? Nope. Okay. And have you had any health, any serious health conditions in the past? Any major operations, felonies? No, I mean, I had my wisdom teeth taken out. I mean, okay. if you call that serious, but. Okay. All right. No, that's not too serious. So that's fine. Okay. So, so we're as, just we're, as we dive through all of this and I, I want to kind of get into some psychology. So obviously we're doing 
medical underwriting, we're going through that. Um, as I've given you a little bit of details about my goals on psychology wise, I want to try to, I want you to kind of explain maybe to the team what you would potentially do if I say, Hey, yeah, I want to pay off the house early. And mm -hmm. this is essentially how much, cause I've gave you so much ammo, right? Yeah. Like most clients are going to be like, yeah, I, I do double payments or five to seven, $800 extra. Now, if I were to tell you something like that, Jonna, what would you think right away? What What are you most likely going to be setting me up with? Um, and why? Probably as at your age. Well, okay. So I need to find out your income first. Okay. See, you know, basically like what you can afford. So after let's say I made 130,000 or something. Okay. So, um, assuming you have, you know, a good chunk of change at the end of every month, you know, but after you pay your bills and expenses. So what I usually do is I find out what people, what their net income is every month, individual net income, and then um, how much they have left over after they pay their bills mm -hmm. okay, and their expenses about how much they have left over. Then I take about five to 8% of that as kind of like my target premiums that I'm going to show okay. them. And now let's just say I've, I've deliberately told you, so if my mortgage is 1800 and I'm paying double, if not five to $800 on top, um, what's, what's your thought process right away? I want to see kind my, of my, my initial thought process is a CBO 100, a 20 okay. year. Yeah. Yeah. And I, that's exactly what I would say. It's like a CBO 20 year, 25 year. If I, the guy's already putting 500 to 800 away. I'm going to use that same chunk of money and say, Hey, you're already putting the money away. We're not going to be paying for any additional insurance today. We're just, we're just reallocating and redistributing where your money's going. Does that right. sound like a good plan you'd want to do today? All right. Now let's get into some objections here. Um, and even if it's some that you hear on a regular basis, you want to just throw at the, the team that you're, you know, you're really good at overcoming. Do you mm -hmm. have any objections that you say, uh, or you typically run across and you're like, I crush this every time. Like you, you can't stop me. This I'm the objection killer on this one. Well, I mean, the objections are, they all can be pretty different. I mean, they, they can be similar, but different, you mm -hmm. know, but for me, it's like being able to to tackle objections just comes from me understanding their situation, me understanding that it's important for them to have a plan and not being afraid to throw it all in their face, you right. know, when they start to try to give me objections. So it's kind of like, you know, I, <clears throat> I don't really shy away from just telling them straight up how it is like, okay, you don't get this. And something happens to you tomorrow, your house is going on foreclosure. You're okay with that. Like, yeah. you know, like really um, being a little bit aggressive with them. And that's for the purpose of helping protect their family, because, you know, for some reason or other people think they're invincible and, you know, they can just get this anytime and, it, you know, they don't need to have it right now. But, mm -hmm. you know, I, I really try to stress the urgency by just like being a little bit aggressive with it. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, I mean, like if you guys, I think. I think what might be helpful for your team though, like if, if you guys are having certain objections that are in your minds right now that you're like, man, I really have a hard time with this one. I wonder how, you know, she would handle it. Feel free to unmute and ask me. Let's do it. So if anybody has any objections, you want to hear how Jonna handles it. Go ahead. And uh, Kyle said the think about it objection. Um, okay. So that, that makes sense that you'd want to think about it. Um, you know, most people do want to have some time to think it over. So with any insurance policy, there's actually what's called a 30 day free look period. So today, so just so you understand, I sit with about a hundred families per week and we'd have to put you back at the end of the queue to try to get this taken care of for you again. So, so either what we're going to do today is have to put in an application. If this is something that you think is important, or we're going to have to close your file because we can't just leave a bunch of files open. So I totally understand you want to think about it. We have a free look period. Okay. So once you put in the application, you get approved and they issue the policy, you're going to have 30 days to think about it. You're going to get to review your coverage, make sure you're happy with it, ask any questions, make any changes. And then if for some reason you decide you don't want mortgage protection, you don't want to protect your family when it comes to the mortgage, if you cancel it, they do refund the first premium. I love so. it. I, I like how you subtly said that too. You know, if you don't want to protect your mortgage or if you don't want to protect your family, 
And it, since you're on Zoom, it's kind of like <laughs> your body language is selling it too. And, mm -hmm. and you can tell you've done this a lot because you're in the flow and and where you have your camera placed. We've, I feel like you're like talking through my soul. So it's <laughs> anybody else get that? <laughs> um, so other objections um, and how you said it, helping hundred of families a week, you've got to get put to the back of the queue. So there's nothing to think about today, right? Um, let's see. I don't give my social to anyone. How can I trust you? So I actually have to go to school to be a licensed underwriter. I have to pass a federal background check and, and get licensed. So I should, I should do my license. Um, if for any reason there was any issue with, you know, the work I'm doing for you, you, you are able to, you know, reach out to your local insurance, you know, administration and, and report me or anything like that. Like I, you know, I'm just doing my job here. Um, and, and that's basically it. I mean, okay. you know, and a lot of times it's, you're going to get the BS sometimes. And sometimes people will just give you excuses because they just don't want to do anything. And that's the beauty of having, you know, 80 appointments 70 a week, appointments. 70 to 80 appointments a week, because then you can just say, you know, you don't have to feel stressed if somebody's going to give you a hard time You say, okay, well now it's more like I'm getting off at the phone versus them trying to get off. I'm like, okay, well, you know, if this is important to you, bye. Like I have somebody else to help that's that actually is serious about protecting their family. So got it. So you're not really begging the door. Um, how about, uh, people that, um, you verified routing or what's a way that you get banking information seamlessly? Yeah. So I, the way that I get banking information is just by asking for it very confidently. Like, um, so I, I write mostly America. Um, and the reason why we write mostly America is because it's instant decision. They get approved on the spot. They get covered on the spot in every state, but California, they have hundred percent coverage, you know, up to hundred percent for critical and chronic illness. Um, you also get a very beautiful bonus, like, you know, after every six months, if you're writing a lot of good business with them. Um, so yeah, it's, it's pretty much a win-win in that regard. So, you know, when I'm going through the application, but, you know, collecting bank information is the same pretty much with all the insurance carriers. Obviously you're asking for routing and account information. So mm -hmm. when I get there, I say, okay, so are you okay, you know, to, to make sure they're good with the premium uh, coming out instantly? I, I ask it in a certain way where I, they say yes, like 98% of the time. So, so let's say, let's walk through that because we're getting to, and next question, since you are on Zoom, are you sharing a screen so they can see everything you're doing? I yeah. do. Beautiful. Yeah. I feel like it just makes them more comfortable. And also like when I'm filling applications, I like, I'm like, like, you know, looking all crazy on the screen. So I'd rather just them um, see what I'm doing. Yeah, exactly. So, like I let them know like, Hey, I'm going to share my screen with you. So, so you can see what I'm doing and, you know, we can go through this together and, you know, make sure like, you know, I'm a sleep deprived mom of, you know, two babies. So just make sure I'm not making any spelling errors here or anything <laughs> like that. Just follow along with me. Hey, yeah. um, uh, <laughs> also with that <laughs> uh, sleep deprived mom. Now, since you are sharing screen, are you typically only doing Zoom or do you sometimes run into a situation where you're doing telephone? I do a couple of, I mean, I end up doing a couple of telephone appointments every day because some people, okay. they just are not tech savvy and got it. Yeah. You know, okay. I close them just the same. Like that's just the mindset thing. Some people think, oh, it's so harder to close on the phone. And I know that there's top producers in our agency that won't even entertain a phone appointment. But to me, it's like, why? Like, they to me, still it's want exactly the, the same as doing it. Yeah. yeah. I, like if, if you they don't, want it, they're going to get it. Hey, if you don't want phone appointments and you don't have time, um, this thing right here called an iPhone, you just go ahead and forward the contact over to 702-830-2340. I got you, okay? Anytime. All right, sounds um, good. All right, so we're sharing the screen. We get so to the payment verification page. Okay, cool. So like we're on the payment page. Okay. Everything looks so good. I say, so I say, okay, now if you guys are approved, if you're approved, are you okay with them putting your protection in place immediately and, and taking the first premium? 
and they usually say yes. Sometimes they'll be like, oh, actually, I got to wait till the next time. You know, I got to wait till I have some more money in my account. And then I, my next thing is like, okay, well, when's the next day you get paid? And that way it's still, you know, within like a week mm-hmm. <laughs> or so. And then, um, and then, then I'll set it for that day. But it's like, I'm deciding the day that is coming out kind of like with the way that I'm framing that question. And when I ask them, okay, so you're okay with this protection going in place immediately, they're usually saying yes, because they're like, yeah, I'm okay with that. Like, I'm not like, so when do you want this to come out? When's a good day for this to come out? Like, because if you ask them that, they're going to be like, oh, well, let's wait, let's push it out to the, like 60 days from now <laughs> or the first of next month. And then you're not, your, your issue paid isn't going to be looking very pretty. Yeah. So. And, and I think that's one of the biggest differences too, where you've got uh, cash on hand or money available is by the type of leads you're running. You know, uh, if you're running more of final expense, people may not have as much money. They're a little bit more on the fixed income. I would save things. Would you agree? Yeah. Final yeah. expense can be pretty tough with that for sure. Yeah. And I've, I've ran across that too, where lately, like I, I actually had someone the other day ask me if I could push it out to 60 days. And I said, no, we're like, we're either doing it today and it's coming out in the next 30 or we're not doing it at all. Like we're not waiting. We're not waiting till March, Bob, to get this done. And I, they were like, no, we're not going to do it. And I was like, well, let me just see if the carrier will do it. And I put data and they said, yep. And I was like, all right, it's in better make money, make sure money's there the next two months. (laughs) But at that point, it's like, you set it and forget it. And what can you do? But I love how you're doing that. The wording and getting that through, I'm trying to think of if anybody has any other objections here, please um, drop it in here. Kyle, if you're still on here, what was that one app called that uh, you're able to do like a share screen? Because for some of the people on here, I think that would be really helpful. I lost the crank wheel. It's called crank wheel. So apparently you can send a link to whatever you're looking at and it'll share the screen. So it's a Google extension add on. Yeah, Kyle. Um, if you, if you know how it works, maybe you could, this would be a helpful tool for you too, John. So if someone isn't able to get on zoom, but they're able to touch a text message and they can go ahead and get onto crank wheel, you can go ahead and share everything that you're doing with your client, walking them through the page, walking them through the application and everything. And this is something that I'm going to introduce into my system, um, probably tomorrow because I've had a little bit of hiccups this week with people not wanting to give me socials or banking. And there was a trust and credibility situation. I'm going, okay, I'm under a time constraint. I want to be on this on and off this call in like 30 to 40 minutes to be helping three to five families a day. And how can I do that? Adding credibility as fast as possible. So it's, you share them, share with them everything that you're doing. Here's my license. Here's the process. Here's everything. This is what it looks like, right? Mm-hmm. And the fact that they're able to see you, it's it's a game changer. I feel that right there alone and the backdrop, even though that's a virtual, it doesn't look like it's a virtual at all. Yeah, <laughs> was, people always think it's real. They're like, where are you? It looks really nice. I was like, dang, dude, like what sky? I mean, like I'm trying to think like you're in Florida. Like where do you have sky rise with fields like that? I mean, are you in like Ocala? Uh, but I do they have high rises in Ocala? Um, Erica probably knows. Um, um, no, that's it, funny. No, that's hilarious. <laughs> she dropped that one in real quick. Um, all right. So anybody else have any other, um, any other objections that you would want to ask any questions specifically for Jonna? Um, please unmute. Don't be shy. I know there's a handful of people on here that typically don't get on here. So, um, We've got a lot of interested people knowing how to become the next you. So, and do you do any type of live training or not? Prob probably not because you're on Zoom with your clients all day, right? Yeah. Okay. Not quite. <laughs> so, do you get do you get tired of just seeing clients every single day? Like, you want to just see people that you actually know, or you just being around your kids, your nanny, and your clients every day? That's good for you. I mean, might, that might you know, be a little like bit said, of a personal question, but <laughs> at the end of December, I was definitely like, you know, dealing with a little bit of like mental burnout, which is why yeah. I took vacation. Right. So you, you have to, 
you have to be in touch with yourself and know that like, you know, like it's gonna, if, if you're just pushing hard all the time, 24 seven, you know, seven days a week, 30 days a month, you're going to deal with burnout. And if you don't like recognize when you're starting to get tired or like you need to kind of adjust things to make sure you're taking care of your, your mindset and, and everything, then yeah, I, I think you just have to know yourself and, you know, make sure you're taking care of what needs to be done so that that doesn't happen. Mm-hmm. Something I've recently just uh, dove into, I bought like a five tier little gardening thing for my patio mm-hmm. and I'm growing like herbs. Nice. So getting my hands dirty in some soil and like getting mint and putting it in some tea and stuff. So it's nice to do something where you've got to just like separate from work. Yeah. Um, some my, individuals. My, my secret sauce is the Asian massage place. Okay. <laughs> Those are there, like walk in, you know, instant massage. They walk on your back. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. And, um, so we do have, um, some more objections here. What if they want to ask about captive life insurance? And uh, clients don't ask about captive life insurance. I mean, they don't know the difference between, I mean, can, that's, that's more pertaining to like when you're an agent, you know? Or how about this? I I've heard this happen. I've got all state or state farm. I'm good. Okay. That, right. Um, so when they, I've got it bundled say, together. Actually, that we'll use that one. I've got a bundle okay. package. I'm good. Yeah. I mean, depending on what they say that they have, it can be a little tough sometimes because then they're like, oh, well, I have, you know, critical protection and disability and all this stuff. So I don't need this. And I'm like, well, especially over Zoom, it's like, you can't really look at what they have. It's kind of hard, you know? Okay. So I do my best, but like a lot of those, honestly, I don't close them because it's just like, well, you already got it all taken care of. And like, I can't even see what you have to tell you otherwise, but you know, I just try to like build a, you know, a lot of value for what I can offer them. Okay. And then, you know, sometimes every once in a while they'll go for it. But in those situations, honestly, I don't, a lot of times it's not a close. You're, you're um, not pushing them. So here, maybe yeah. I can help you on that. So if they've got bundle. I always ask them like, were you aware that your, your programs may or may not have living benefits? And they're like, what are living benefits? Oh, you know, when you're working with Mutual of Omaha or Americo, they're going to offer you critical, chronic, terminal illness. And then after 30 years, you're going to get all your money back. I'm assuming your program doesn't offer that, right? No, it sure doesn't. It actually expires next year. Oh my gosh. Now that's why we're on the phone. Right. Right. Maybe that'll help. Um, yeah. I, and that's typically what I, you know, what I do. I, I try to sell them on the living benefits. You know, well, I know State Farm and Allstate don't have that, but it's more so when when the objection of living benefits is like when they say that it has disability or cancer protection, things like that. They're like, I already have that. Well, that's when, you know, in those types of bundles where I'm like, okay, well, you have it all. So in and it, it's different to say, so do you currently have just uh, an actual cancer plan? Or is it a program that's going to cover critical, chronic, and terminal illness? So heart attack, stroke, cancer, um, organ failure, you know, X, Y, Z, list it off, you know? And they're mm-hmm. like, oh my God, I it's only going to cover me for cancer. Well, what if you had a plan that would cover it all? And that's, that's for me, I just try to think like, if we can have a program that's going to give you one thing or have a program that's going to give you like 10, they both cost the same. Would you rather have one or 10? Right. Yeah. 10. Yeah. 10. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So let's see. I got a quick question. Okay. Key, go ahead. If you want on mute. Yeah. Jesse and uh, John, uh, I just, I got, I just got this first objection. I've never gotten before, but I don't know how it works. So I want like you guys advice. I was talking to her and she said, I got life insurance through m and bank. Like, how would you guys handle that? MNT Bank. Yeah, cause I me I, I I never got that objection. So like when I did, I I got you know. When people tell me they have life insurance through their bank, I'm like, well, that's you know that's great. It sounds like a good add on. But as far as you know, having a policy that's going to you know protect your your mortgage and give you the living benefits, it's going to protect you against critical illness, chronic illness, you know, terminal illness, and death, and give you your money back, like. I'm sure your bank probably doesn't offer that. Like, you know, they might offer you a little policy that covers you. I mean, I feel like most of the bank policies are like final. Accidental. Steps. They're yeah, usually like, accidental. 
Mm -hmm. And a lot of times that's, that's the case too. You know, people will say, Oh, if if anybody ever tells you they have 200,000 and they're paying like 40 bucks a month and they're like 60 (laughs) years old, it's accidental. You can, it's just safe to assume that. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. That's usually my, my go-to. And they're like, Oh, I've got insurance through my bank. Okay. Did they happen to review that it's only accidental? So that's not going to cover you from natural causes of death. How much are you paying for that? Oh, I'm paying 12 bucks a month or it's free, right? Yeah. That's usually the, the telltale sign. Like I'm getting them insurance today and they I need to poke holes in that accidental plan because they don't even know what they have. And here's the thing too. A lot of times people say, well, I have life insurance. Why do I need this? Well, that's great. Everybody, you know, most of the people I talk to have life insurance. The reason why you have a, a mortgage protection policy is because I'm sure you got that life insurance policy because you want to leave your family like cash when you, if you pass away, right. You want them to have like liquid cash. Right. And they say, well, yeah. I'm like, okay, well the mortgage protection policy is specifically to pay the bank. If something happens to you to pay off the bank for your entire mortgage. So this is specifically for your mortgage, nothing else. Okay. So you have, you want to leave the house paid off for your family and you want them to have cash. Does that sound right? And they always say, yeah, yeah, that's what I want. (laughs) Awesome. Brian has a question. Go ahead, Brian. Hey, this was really, really awesome. First of all, so thank, thank both of you guys for for making that a uh, very, very um awesome experience. Um, so, John, um, yeah. So, I- Brian, you just muted yourself. All right, can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. I'm sorry, my phone it uh, rang. Um, I'm really, really interested in hearing how you uh, book appointments and how you actually train your setters to book appointments and a little bit of what that looks like. Um, so I book appointments using Vivian's script. I mean, I've, I've used a lot of different scripts over the years, but like when I came over to FFL Aria, I started using her script because she has very high, uh, show ratio and things like that. And she's got a very good appointment setting script. Um, can you share that with me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I mean, as far as, I, you know, as far as having appointment setters, like, I guess, you know, if, how long have you been in the, how long have you been setting appointments, Brian? Uh, I set appointments for, for a while. I train appointment setters as well. I'm just oh, cool. curious on, on your, on your, uh, how you do that. Yeah. So, I mean, I have, I have two girls that set appointments for me and, um, I I get on Zoom with them every week and I talk to them and I say, you know, how's it going this week? Like what objections, you know, have have happened for you that you didn't know how to handle? Like what struggles have you had? Um, And I just kind of let them tell me like where they've, you know, had difficulties. And I tell them to make sure to keep notes about things like that so that we can address them. Um, I talk to them on WhatsApp every day, you know, and they communicate with me like what's going on and Um, And I just work with them like that. I spend some time with them, you know, give them objection handling ideas and, and that's basically it. And I incentivize them. I, not only do I pay them to set appointments, but I also incentivize them with bonus. So they get, you know, if they set a certain amount of appointments every week, they get a bonus. Um, Yeah. So they you also give them a bonus based off of um, like a, a close to bonus ratio or like booking to closing ratio. So, so they, book, they book better appointments that you can close. Do they you yeah, also get a bonus? To, for them to qualify for the bonus, it has to be a 50% show ratio, 40 appointments a week, 50% show ratio. That's freaking um, awesome. <laughs> yeah. So, and then, you know, I pay them for, uh, for the sales, they get 20 and for the sit, no sale. So if somebody showed up, I give them, I believe five five per each one, something like that. Wait. So, and then, yeah. And then I have a, um, somebody who manages them as well. And I also give her a little bit of a bonus on the sales so that, you know, she's feeling appreciated for the hard work she's doing to oversee the appointment center. So. Gotcha. Wow. That's really, really, really cool. And in, in terms of how they actually book, uh, like the mind state, are they booking as your assistant? Or are they booking as, how, how does that work for you? Yeah. I just have them book as like a case manager. Sweet. Mm -hmm. as the dispatcher yeah that's what Mm -hmm. i used to do i used to call my leads and i'd be like hey jonna this is uh this is andrew 
to be like, Hey, Andrew, how's it going? Be like, Hey, so I'm just the local dispatcher. Jesse's going to be in the area tomorrow. And I was setting it that way because I wasn't paying someone. Yeah. Now I should have been because I may have been able to help eight or 900 families last year instead of 500. <laughs> so. Yeah. I used to book in the third person too. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, thank Jonna, I, thank Brian, you so much, Jonna. Yeah. I hey, appreciate you, you. Appreciate your questions, brother. Um, now, anybody else have any final questions here? I I want to respect her time as much as possible. Yeah, I got a question. Hi, Sean. Uh, Jonna, what would you say just ballpark um, would be like a healthy like lead spend or either weekly, I guess, or monthly? Um. Yeah, I would. You know, recommend getting exclusive leads. You know, any any type of leads will do, but I, I would say exclusive ones that you know that haven't been run over eighty five right. times. Right. Um, <laughs> and I mean, it's for me to produce two hundred thousand a month. I was spending yeah. seventy five hundred a week. Seventy five hundred a week. That's all I wanted to know. But yeah, for that. So I mean, you have to. You just have to scale it for what you're going through. If it, if you're trying to do a hundred families a right. month, I would say you know, depending on how good your clothes, like I have a high close ratio, but yeah. I would say, you know, three, like three to 4,000 or 4,500, right. something like that. That makes sense. And this may sound like a silly question, but in regards to like paying your dialers and paying the manager that kind of manages the dialers, um, this is probably something for like six months, 12 months down the road. But if, um, do you know like ballpark, like how much I would need to like save up to kind of allocate those funds towards those people if I decided to go down that route in the future? Well, um, I think, you know, like once you start booking, you know, a lot of appointments and having right. a lot of fresh leads and you have right. a lot of appointments and you're closing, and you're seeing right. your bankroll go up, things like that, then, you know, you can just take some of that money and then start investing in you know, other things that are going to help your right. business, like an appointment setter. And it's just, that's how you scale your business. So right. um, that doesn't necessarily have to take six months. For me, it took two months, you know, it's just making those investments and putting, doing the work and making it happen. Um, but yeah, I right. mean, as far as like most of the people on our team only have one dialer, I have two because I mm-hmm. want to produce more than everybody. <laughs> Um, I just want to have like the high, you know, it's, I'm just a little bit, I guess, uh, competitive like that, but I also <laughs> just want to have like a high level of production. I, mean, I have <laughs> one. I just never use them. I just, I don't know, I guess uh, just maybe like an extra thousand a week or something like that. So, yeah. So I pay for, for two, for two dialers. Well, for one dialer for 40 hours, it's around 500 a week, something like okay, that. That's not bad. Yeah, yeah, for two, doable. it's doable. around a thousand if they're both dialing 40 hours a week. Right now, I have them dialing 30 hours a week each, right. so 60 hours total, and that's running me about 700. Um, and then I bonus them. So their bonuses nice. are, I don't know, anywhere from 200 to 300 each a week. Wow. Like that. So you're you're spending roughly twenty five to $45,000 just on admin, right? uh, with leads and everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's what it takes guys. Um, to be the best, Thank you've you. got to invest unlike the rest. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, and, and it's not to say that like, she's spectacular guys, like listen to her story. She wasn't there before, but she saved and she pushed hard. She sacrificed and she got there. And she just kept getting better and better and better. Because, John, last question before we go. When you first got in the insurance industry four years ago, how much were you investing in the leads? Um, between like 1000 and 2000 a week. Okay. So right off the bat, you were still pushing yourself to invest as much as you could um, when you were even brand new. Because for me, yeah. I'll be honest with you, when I, when I got here at FFL, I was investing three to $400 a week. Um, but that's what I had. And eventually you get to the point where you're investing two to $3,000 a week. Um, and you get better and better. And eventually you're doing what Jonna does nearly $10,000 a week to help your business grow into the direction you want to go. Yeah. So 
how big and do you guys want to do the thing too though guys is like i mean for me with the, like i used to really tap out with dialing like i used to really hate being on the phones you know i'd get distracted i'd go downstairs for a snack this and that i'd be tired didn't want to do it um and you know investing in leads isn't going to do you anything if you don't have the work ethic to sit on the phone for you know eight to ten to twelve hours a day and you know get those appointments set like you need to have a, a high appointment count to put up those kind of numbers because you know your your work ethic has to match your time on the phone your work ethic has to match your monetary investment in your lease as well so mm -hmm. in that regard <laughs> yeah you're a freaking badass thank you so much for your time here today yeah. john i know everybody uh has definitely got a lot out of it i have uh, i've got a bunch of notes sitting in front of me i'm excited to start adding some of this. So I might be calling you, picking your brain. Who knows? I might take a trip up to where you're at and say, Hey, I'm just going to sit here and, and just, and just watch. I want to see the, the magic happen because that's where the direction I feel like we all need to go. And you've unlocked the matrix with life insurance. And I feel like you are just at the beginning where three to 400 families in a month is going to be the new norm for you. You're going to be able to do hundred a week. I already see it. You start to unlock one thing. We're going to leave it on this. One thing you can introduce into your business, the golden question. Because if you're running mortgage leads, how much times or how many times are you asking the golden question? Do you have anything else that acts like life insurance? Because with the amount of appointments you're running, all it takes is another couple of those every single month. And now you're doubling and tripling your income because of the annuities that you're finding. And if Jonah, I'll just full transparency. If you don't want to do that, just send them my way again. I got you, <laughs> but Sounds good. I'll teach you how it all works. Guys, thank you so much for everyone's time. I appreciate you all being here. Jonah, thank you so much for your time. If you want to maybe leave us with one last um, piece of mindset, anything for the business, feel free. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think thanks everyone for, you know, listening and um, hopping on here. And, you know, I think the most important thing to, to understand is like in this industry, things can change so fast for you. If you just take some steps, you know, you push outside of your comfort zone a little bit, you know, sometimes a lot, <laughs> but you do things that you, that are not within your comfort zone. Cause as long as you stick to your comfort zone, you're never going to grow. Any successful business owners will tell you, you, you have to take risks. You have to do things that, you know, you wouldn't normally do to, to grow your business. So, I mean, you can just make that decision like, okay, today I'm going to make a commitment. I'm, I'm going to spend, you know, 3000 on some like fresh leads. I'm going to spend, you know, as long as it takes on the phone to make sure I have 40 appointments booked this week, you know, um, and make it happen and just cut the excuses. It's just excuses. I mean, there's so many things in your brain that are telling you, oh, I can't do it because of this or this, or this is holding me back. This person's holding me, this thing's holding me back. No, it's you that's holding you back. Stop. So that's, you know, that's basically it. Just gotta work. Badass. Yeah. Thank you, Jonna, for your time. I appreciate you. This will be on YouTube guys. So if you did miss anything, you want to come back and take some notes, feel free. Make sure you subscribe, click like, and thank you for your time, guys. I'll see you yep. next week. Thanks, And then Jonah. also, uh, Jesse, if you guys want to follow me on Instagram, it's just my first and last name. Um, I'll type in the chat. J-O-H-N-N-A-K-O-M-A-R-A. Yeah, feel free to reach out. Feel free to reach out. She's awesome. Um, responsive and guys she's still able to respond to you and she's helping this many families like you're a rock star thank you so much for your time john i appreciate you thank you everybody i'll see you guys soon all right bye-bye god bless Later.